From the mid-1950s through the late 1960s, the United States experienced a period of phenomenal progress and profound change that would alter forever the way we protect the rights of every individual in our nation, the modern civil rights movement. During these times of enormous change and rapid transition, conditions exist that demand true greatness from those who would take the reins of leadership. Great leaders combine the passion of their dreams with effective leadership techniques. They define goals, build teams, and inspire and persuade people with their great communication skills. Just such a person emerged to lead the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, Jr. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. With a simple but monumentally significant act, the civil rights movement made a significant leap forward when Rosa Parks, an African-American tailor's assistant, refused to give up her seat on the bus. She was arrested and fined. I got the bus to go home, and after I had taken a seat on the bus, the driver demanded that I give this seat up for a white man. I didn't feel that I was being treated as a human being. I refused to give up this seat. I said no, and I wouldn't give it up. The African-American community rose up in support of her action. Martin Luther King Jr. was called on by a coalition of community leaders in Montgomery to help organize a bus boycott. And as he said, he responded to the call of the people for a spokesman. The community alliance he headed created a plan of action and developed innovative plans to provide alternative transportation for the community. They also sought dialogue and negotiation with city officials. The boycott lasted 381 days, tested the mental and physical strength of all involved, and was finally successful. However, such victories do not come without a price. Churches and houses were bombed, including the home of Dr. King. He responded by saying, when evil men plot, good men must plan. When evil men burn and bomb, good men must build and bind. In April of 1963, Dr. King and his followers went to Birmingham, Alabama, with the goal of not only helping to desegregate the city, but as he categorized it, to awaken the moral conscience of America. Dr. King realized the civil rights movement needed some way to focus the eyes of the world on the rightful struggle by African Americans for the freedoms guaranteed by the American Constitution. As he wrote in his letter from the Birmingham jail, the goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up with America's destiny. He understood that the attention of the national and international media could accomplish that goal. Unfortunately, in Birmingham, the desired media focus came at a high price. Photographers' lenses broadcast the infamous images of demonstrators being pummeled by water cannons and teenagers being attacked by police dogs. The efforts in Birmingham ultimately achieved their goals. Department stores and all of the public facilities were desegregated, and the eyes of the nation and the world had been focused on the civil rights movement. All leaders have their moments of doubt. When the bombing of a Birmingham church took the lives of four Sunday school girls, Dr. King wondered if the costs had risen too high. The passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, banning discrimination in public places, had done little to enforce voting rights for African Americans. So early in 1965, Dr. King led a large group of associates to Selma in an effort to register voters throughout the state of Alabama. But the sheriff physically barred people from the courthouse and prevented their attempt to register. Within a few weeks, over 150 protesters 
including Dr. King, were arrested. The angry reaction of white segregationists to the voter registration efforts intensified and reached a harmful crescendo when a march was proposed from Selma to Montgomery, a distance of 54 miles. Governor George Wallace ordered state troopers to stop the march. When the nonviolent protesters attempted to cross Selma's Edmund Pettus Bridge, several minutes of bloody confrontation resulted in serious injuries to over 70 people and led that day to be forever remembered in the civil rights movement as Bloody Sunday. The violent scenes from the bridge were flashed across America by national television networks. In response, people from across the nation, both black and white, converged on Selma. Two weeks later, after the intervention of President Johnson and a constitutional ruling by a federal judge, over 3,000 people began their march from Selma to Montgomery. The crowd continued to grow daily as the march continued. Five days later, more than 25,000 people arrived in Montgomery, Alabama. And that summer, the U.S. Congress passed and President Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. We believe that all men are entitled to the blessings of liberty, yet millions are being deprived of those blessings, not because of their own failures, but because of the color of their skin. This Civil Rights Act is a challenge to all of us to go to work in our communities and our states, in our homes and in our hearts, to eliminate the last vestiges of injustice in our beloved country. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a great leader. When asked to serve, Martin stepped forward and gave of himself fully. He listened to the voice of the people when they demanded no more than what they had been promised. His place at the forefront of profound change brought adversity in the form of insults, investigations, beatings, bombings, and jail. When challenged by an obstacle, he persevered with observation, meditation, innovation, and sacrifice. He believed that change is more evolution than revolution, that one can be tough-minded without being hard-hearted. He learned to inspire his followers and persuade his adversaries. And through his 12 years of public life, he helped to bring the people closer to their goal than all the efforts of the preceding century had managed to achieve. And throughout it all, he maintained his humility. Martin Luther King Jr. stated, I don't march because I like it. I march because I must. Perhaps the most successful was the march on Washington, D.C. in August of 1963, when over 200,000 people, nearly one quarter of them white, assembled between the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. 
Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. Will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. 